beautiful things about sentence diagramming that can help you figure out sentences is that sometimes you may have a word that is one part of speech uh, under normal circumstances, but it's acting as a different part of speech for the purposes of how the sentence functions. And this is especially true of a type of word called a verbal. A verbal is something that's created out of a verb, but it's not acting like a verb. Um, and when you put those in a sentences, sentence, you will have oftentimes a whole phrase working with them. So first we want to look at a little bit of definition of what we're working with. First off, a verbal is something that's based on a verb, but it's not acting like a verb. So it's a verb form that's acting as some other part of speech. And there are three basic forms that you will see that a verbal will have. Uh, sometimes it'll be the ing form of a verb. Um, if you have the ing form of the verb, um, it cannot stand by itself and actually be a verb. If the ing form is all by itself without any helping verbs, then the ing form of the verb is a verbal. It's going to be acting like something other than a verb. Uh, another form of the verb that's often a verbal is the ed or en form of the verb, um, which would be the past participle. And so often, not always, but often, if you have the ed or en ending on a verb, if it doesn't have any helping verbs, it could well be a verbal. The other form of a verb uh, that can be a verbal is the to form, to run or to play. When you have that, it's not acting as a verb. Once again, it's acting as a verbal. It's going to be acting as some other part of speech in the sentence. And so when we're looking at this, we then look at what's a verbal phrase. A verbal phrase is going to be a verbal plus all the other words that go with it. So um, it may be just the verbal all by itself, but it could well also be uh, a verbal plus a direct object. Uh, maybe some adjectives in there, things like that. So the verbal plus all the other words that go with it is the verbal phrase. Now, when you're figuring out where to put these in a sentence, uh, you want to look at what they can act as. Um, it can act as a noun which means to say it's going to be answering a question what or who. It can also act as an adjective, where it's going to be answering the question how many or what kind. It can also act as uh, an adverb, meaning it can modify a verb or it can modify an adjective, or it can modify another adverb. And so if it's answering the question who, I mean, if it's answering the question when, or where, or why, or how, or to what extent, um, those all questions, a verbal will be an adverb if it's answering one of those questions. So what we want to look at then is what's our basic form for a verbal phrase? Uh, and basically, because verbal phrases, especially they can act as adjectives and adverbs, you're going to have a framework that looks like a prepositional phrase. So 
supposing I have a verbal phrase um, where, um, say I'm using the ing form of a verb. I might have, um, say, looking. And you'll see in this case, the verb kind of turns the corner. Um, and um, I'm going to do, oh, I guess this will just have a prepositional phrase attached to it. It can say, looking past the obvious. So that would be something uh, that uses an ing form of the verb. Um, or maybe you have something with the to form of a verb. So if I have to see and then maybe a direct object, things clearly. So we have these structures, and so we want to look at how do we attach these structures into a sentence diagram. Um, so I'm going to start with the most complicated one, which is as a noun. Um, so if we have, apparently, this perspective of a mother's prospects, failed in producing its due effect. So what we want to do here is we look at this sentence and we have a verbal producing is our verbal. It's an ing verb. There are no helping verbs around it. <coughs> In this case, it's acting as a noun, which if you want the technical term for it is called a gerund. But it's an ing form of the verb without any helping verbs, so it's a verbal. So how are we going to put that in the sentence? Uh, we'll start with our basic framework. And I'm going to look at, um, we have this sentence, and I'm just going to put the basic core elements in for now. You can imagine where all the prepositional phrases and adjectives go. So we have our core of our sentence is perspective. And our verb is failed. And I see one. <laughs> and so what we want to do now is say, OK, how are we going to attach our verbal in this sentence? The verbal itself is producing. The verbal phrase is producing its due effect. So we have producing, which even though it's not a verb, it's the verbal. And we have its due effect, which is actually, in this particular case, a direct object. So first off, we have in. So in producing. So in is a preposition. So we have a noun that's the object of a prepositional phrase. And this is where the tricky part comes. For a noun, we do what I like to call a cake platter. So you stick this little triangle here, and then you have this platter on top. And that's where our verbal phrase is going to go. In this case, we have an ing verb, so we know it goes around the corner here, producing. And then it has a direct object. It's due effect. So effect. Is our object 
and we have it's due modifying that. So when you have a verbal phrase that acting is a noun, you need to use this cake platter because otherwise the noun is normally on a line and if you have, especially if it's a noun that's acting as a direct object, uh, you would have a direct object and then a direct object and a direct object and the sentence gets confusing. So when you're using a verbal phrase as a noun, you need the cake platter. 